The following lesson is linked to learning outcome one, speaking and listening, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate planning and research skills for oral presentations. Learners should be able to incorporate appropriate visual, audio, and audio-visual aids, such as charts, posters, photographs, slides, images, music, sound, and electronic media. Hi and welcome back to our series about planning speeches. Today we are going to start with a simple exercise, so listen up. Here are some facts about pollution and recycling. Did you know that if you take a 15 year old tree and you turn it into paper grocery bags, you will get about 700 of them and a supermarket could use all of them in less than an hour. Did you know that recycling one aluminium can saves enough energy to run a TV for three hours? Which of these pieces of information do you think you will remember the longest? I'm willing to bet you'll remember the one that used the visual aids. They give the viewer something to look at and they help the presenter make a point or they help to make the presentation more interesting. Giving your audience more than yourself to look at while you are speaking helps to keep their attention. And even more importantly, visual aids can help you to make your communication clear and accurate. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand the value of visual aids in speeches and choose and use the right one for your speech. In the big wide world, visual forms of communication have become all important Every day we get messages sent to us via film, television, advertising billboards, shop signs, newspapers and magazines, and the internet. We're surrounded by visual aids. So it makes sense to use them to help you communicate your message when delivering a speech. For those of you who've been watching this series from the start, you will know that Palesa is writing a speech on South Africa's new democracy. So, Palesa, have you decided where you want to use visual aids in your speech? I thought the statistics would be the perfect thing to explain using visual aids. They'd be more interesting if I put them on a graph. That's a great idea. For example, you could make a PowerPoint presentation on a computer. In it, you could include all the statistics in a clear, colourful format. The trouble is we don't have computers at my school. And even if we did, I'm not exactly a computer whiz. Well, computers aren't the only visual aid that you can use. It was only a suggestion. What do your teachers use at the moment? All we've got are blackboards. Nothing wrong with that. Blackboards are the oldest and most commonly used visual aids there are, and they never break down. They are easy to use, and they can be used over and over again. So just like your teachers, you can use a blackboard as a visual aid to your speech. But how do you think this would be helpful? Well, as I make the main points in my speech, I could write up the keywords. I could also use the blackboard to draw a diagram to help me show what I'm saying or to draw something like a chart if I needed one. Palesa has come up with some good ideas as to how visual aids can help her with her speech. So before we move on, let's quickly recap and see what they are. Visual aids can be used to record key points and illustrate ideas. Palesa, the blackboard is a really good idea, but unless you can draw really fast and speak at the same time, I think you might have a problem. I suppose I could ask my teacher to write what I wanted in my speech sometime before my speech. And if somebody else speaks first and they also want to use the blackboard? I hadn't thought of that. I know I could write what I wanted in my speech on a big piece of cardboard or paper and then stick it on the blackboard when it's my turn to speak. Good idea. In other words, make your own poster. And what do you think you could put on this poster? Graphs are always a good way of showing information. And to get some tips and ideas, I think this would be a good point to speak to a professional. Meanwhile, Palesa, why don't you start working on your graph? In the 
advertising industry, I think one of the best tools we have uh, for presentations or, or in terms of visual aids is is a laptop. You know, you would arrive at a presentation or you would arrive at a particular meeting, plug in your laptop and probably present off PowerPoint. And uh, just in terms of the type of visual aids you'd use or the, or, or, the, or the best things to do, I think it's important that that you've got some color in the presentations that brings it to life a little bit. It's also important sometimes to use visuals, pictures, sketches, drawings. Sometimes a, a visual device can, can tell a thousand words, whereas trying to explain something uh, you know, without that visual aid or device is off, often makes it very difficult. Um, you know, uh, for example, if we're trying to sell an ad, you might spend a lot of time talking about the tonality of the ad, uh, talking about the treatment of the ad, and, and everyone's got a different picture in their mind as to what that looks like. But when you show visual uh, references from other ads, from movies, pictures, sources of, of stock shots, etc., things that you've sourced over the net, often that can help a lot in, in painting a picture in a person's mind. Well, that all depends on what your key objectives are for your campaign. Um, do you want a branding message that, that you need to stand out, or is it a specific promotion for a, a particular product? Um, in that case, your brand message will be the, the key thing that you leave behind with them. It's that one message that you want them to remember. It's the one thing you want your brand to stand for, or the one thing that you, you're offering. Um, if it's a promotion, it could be a price promotion. But then again, it's also got to be um, relative to who you're talking to. So if, if it's, um, your target market is more technical in nature, then you've got to have a lot more information which they can tap into and enjoy reading. Whereas if you're talking to somebody who isn't in that mindset, then it's got to be quick, quirky um, and sharp. But generally, the type of information you leave them with is the information that represents the, the, the key message um, of what your communication is trying to achieve. Some of the tricks are exactly that. Sincerity and honesty always pays off. Dictating hardly ever pays off. If I can draw your attention to the newspapers for a second. When you look through advertising in newspapers, you'll see large, full-page, two-page spreads of millions of products, millions of prices, and how much attention do you pay to them? Virtually nil. It's kind of, oh, look, Game has a uh, fantastic special on for 960,000 things. So what have you really told me? Game's got loads of stuff. In a way, I can, it's kind of being honest. But if I were to trigger something in your own experience that is relevant to you, a thing we like to call a human truth, if I was to touch a nerve and say, do you remember your first day at school? Do you remember the way you felt the first time you scored a goal playing soccer? Do you remember the first time you managed to stay upright on a bicycle? Do you remember your first kiss? Do you remember the way it felt the day you left matric. All of these things are human truths. We all have some way of, of relating to them. And in that relationship, we can create an emotional response. Now, if you want, that, if you want to change somebody's behavior and you want to really persuade them, you must have command of their emotions. So, Belissa, how's it going? I just finished my graph, but I thought I could pass around something for people to look at, such as? Well, my mom has some photos from the 1994 elections. This is one of me as a child with my mom standing in the election lines. I thought it might be very interesting and suitable for the topic. Very good. Having something that people can see and touch helps them to remember your idea. Also, it shows that you prepared your speech and you've given some thought to what you want to say. So here's something else we can say about visual aids. Visual aids can be used to record key points, illustrate ideas, show statistics as graphs, and, as with Palessa's photograph, they can be real samples to show what you're talking about. One quite common mistake learners make when making a speech is the following. They have a whole pile of books that they pass around and instead of looking well prepared, they just look flustered. But what if I find something really nice, but it's in a book? Well, if you want to use pictures, use only one or two and make sure that you've got bookmarks in the right places so that you can find them quickly. Then wait till the end of your speech to pass them around or ask people to come up afterwards and look at them.
So the types of visual aids we have covered so far are computer-based visual aids, the blackboard, posters, pictures and samples. If you are lucky enough to attend a well-equipped school, you may be able to make use of other visual aids such as an overhead projector, a slide projector or video. But visual aids don't have to be high-tech and expensive. It's how you use them that makes them effective. As I mentioned earlier, your visual aids should only be aids. They should support what you are saying, not take over from it. Remember, your teacher is assessing your speech-making ability, not whether you can do a fancy computer presentation. Your visual aids should be a part of well-researched information that supports your speech. It is not there as decoration, a picture to impress your audience. Wow, there's a lot to think about. I hope I remember it all. Well, maybe the best thing to do is to list all the things to avoid with visual aids. Make sure you don't use visual aids just for decoration. So your posters or visual aids should show exactly what you are talking about and add to what you are saying. Make sure your visual aids aren't too complicated. A huge chart filled with statistics, words and lines is difficult to see clearly and understand. So keep your visuals simple and to the point. Keep away from complicated technology. So if you are going to use a computer, a slide projector or a video, make sure that you know how to use them and that they are in a good working order. There's nothing worse than having to stop in the middle of what you are saying to fix a machine. Finally, make sure the design of your visuals is not boring or untidy. So your posters should be really attractive, easy to read and understand. They should create an interest in your audience, not just confuse them. And they should look really good. Here they are again. To check that you have understood these points, here is today's task. Imagine that you are trying to convince your class to clean up your school environment. Think of three visual aids that you could use as part of your speech and how you would use them effectively. Next time, we'll be dealing with the final step, delivering the speech. So until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.